Hey, ambitious dentist, welcome to Start Your Dental Practice, the show for existing and aspiring dentists to take your dental practice to the highest possible level. I'm your host, Jonathan Van Horn, CPA and ABV, founder of DentistMetrics.com. In every episode, we aim to demystify the how to start a dental practice problem by bringing on world-class dentists, influencers, and consultants in the dental industry to pick their brain about how to get past the barriers involved from going from no practice to being a practice owner to owning your own successful dental practice. There are many things that go into building a successful dental practice. Good marketing helps get patients in the door, high quality team, make sure things run smoothly, and delivering great service ensures your patients leave happy. But there's a huge factor that many small business owners, especially dental practices, often neglect. It can have a huge impact on your bottom line. And what's that? It's your office design. Now look, the second your patients step into your office, you want to make sure you're leaving a good impression. Which is why I'm excited to have Cheryl Janice, founder of Cheryl Janice Designs, on the show. Cheryl specializes in building high nurturing environments for purpose-driven physicians and healthcare businesses, helping them get the most out of their office space. While we talk a lot about increasing revenues, marketing, SEO, and everything else here on SYDP, I really think you'll get a lot out of our conversation today. So here are a few things you'll learn. The biggest mistakes most practice owners make when designing their office and how to fix them. Why good office design can have a direct impact on your practice's revenues. The color that inspires trust and how you can implement it in your office today. How just a few additions to your office can transform your patient experience and much, much more. So at the end of the episode, you'll learn how you can get Cheryl's awesome bonus on how to choose the right paint colors for your office. So be sure to listen all the way to the end to find out how to get access to that. Hey guys, sorry for the interruption. Really quick announcement for you. And if you're going to be a dental practice owner, you know you're at some point going to have to get a dental practice loan. Whether it's going to be to acquire a dental practice or it's going to be to start a startup dental practice, you're going to have to get a loan. And I'm really proud to say that a company that I've worked with personally dozens of times over the past few years is our first sponsor after 80 episodes of Start Your Dental Practice. And our first sponsor is Bank of America Practice Solutions. So whenever you're going to be getting a new loan, whenever you're going to get a loan for starting your dental practice or acquiring a dental practice, you really want to make sure that you have three things when it comes to that loan. Number one, you want a really great interest rate. Number two, you want to make sure that the company that you're speaking with has uh, a lot of experience and can guide you through the best path to be able to become a practice owner through the loan process. And number three, you want to make sure that the terms associated with that loan are the most advantageous for you. And I'm really happy to say that all three of these things, Bank of America just knocks it out of the park for you. And they've got some really great new promotions that I'm not even sure if one of these that they've even announced anywhere else other than what I'm about to say to you on the Start Your Dental Practice podcast. So, SYDPers, here is the announcement for this. So, number one, interest rates. They've got a couple of really great promotions. The first one is on new acquisitions. The first year of that loan, 1.89% for a dental practice acquisition right now in the first year. That's crazy low. You never even hear of loans dipping below 3%, nonetheless, less than 2% on that first year. And then after the first year, it's still super competitive compared to everybody else out there because the Bank of America always comes in as either the lowest interest rate or one of the lowest interest rates of any banks that are out there. So that's the first part of that. Again, you want to make sure you have a great interest rate. Number two, you want to make sure that the company you're working with has a lot of dental practice experience. I don't know if any company out there in the world has more dental practice loan financing uh, experience than Bank of America does. They're fantastic at it. Their reps are really good. And they're going to be able to tell you if the deal is going to be able to get done or if it's not going to be able to get done. So they don't waste your time uh, at all. And they can help you understand the different nuances throughout that process. Fantastic. The third piece of this is that the best terms. So here's the really cool part. A lot of people don't realize this, but whenever you are buying a practice or starting a practice up, 
most banks, if not, you know, 90 percent of them out there require that you have disability insurance as well as life insurance to cover the payments for that loan, as well as to cover the term, the total value of those loans. This goes up and down quite a bit for different types of loan sizes, as well as different risk profiles for the person receiving the loans. But let's call it $600 a month for those insurance rates. Very, you know, kind of middle of the line for you. $600 a month you have to pay in addition to the loan to be able to have those insurances funded to be able to have that policy, to have that loan. Bank of America is getting rid of that completely. So you do not have to have that. If you think about that, that $600 a month, that's $7,200 a year. Over 10 years, that's $72,000 you're going to save by going with Bank of America Practice Solutions. It's really no brainer. If you're going to have to get a loan, which you are going to have to do 100%, you may as well go with a company that has a great interest rates, has great experience with the industry, and has the best terms out there in the market today. So if you're currently in the process of shopping loans, 100% give Bank of America Practice Solutions a try. And if you would mention that you came through the SYDP community, it would help out the podcast a lot and also allow us to give back to our very gracious sponsors. Again, this is an advertisement, a paid advertisement. If you go to them, I will, uh, you know, have more advertising revenue come to me. So if you enjoy the podcast, I would appreciate you helping out our sponsors. Uh, and if you are interested in that loan process, just text the word bank loan, one word, B A N K L O A N to 33444. Again, that's bank loan to 33444. And we will reach out to you. Thanks, guys. Hello, ambitious dentist. Today, I have a very special treat for us. Uh, I have with us Cheryl Janice, who is, ha, is has an interesting piece of information for us to learn about today. Something that, you know, me being you know, a, a, a mid thirties male that has absolutely no creativity within me. I mean, I, I, I named my podcast, start your dental practice because I wanted it to be an active motion thing of saying, guys, go out there and do it. Just start the practice, get it going, get going. Uh, and now everyone assumes that I'm a, uh, I, I talk about startup dental practices all the time. That's, that's not the case, obviously. Uh, so that just shows how, how much creative juice I have flowing inside of my little bitty uh, brain up there. So uh, today I have Cheryl with us, and she is the author of the book, The Color Cure, How to Transform Your Healthcare Office, Clinic, or Treatment Room into an Oasis by Choosing the Perfect Paint. Uh, she also uh, is, uh, runs a business that teaches health and wellness professionals how to transform their businesses into nurturing spaces that increase revenue. She's been on, uh, been featured on many other publications, podcasts. Uh, you know, our friend Dr. Koss is over at the Dentalpreneur podcast, uh, the Docpreneur podcast. She actually also hosts her own podcast called the Wellness Design Podcast. And so uh, we're really happy to have Cheryl on the episode with us today because she knows some, she knows an area of business that I have no clue about. Like I've, I have no idea how to even approach what colors to or design you should have inside of you know any business not to mention the a dental practice so cheryl so thanks so much for coming on today to, to teach me about all the things that i don't know about <laughs> thanks for having me jonathan i'm thrilled to be here absolutely thrilled so cheryl every time we get on uh, i find it really important to get everyone's backstory because i know everyone out there that's listening is thinking uh, so who is this person and why should I listen to them? <laughs> so right, right, Cheryl, right. Give, us, give, us, give us your backstory. Tell, tell us who you are, what sure. about your business, everything like that. Well, I designed healthcare, you know, boutique style health, healthcare environments, as you said, for purpose-driven physicians and wellness professionals who basically desire a nurturing space, highly profitable, patient attracting and referral generating, you know, dynamo. As, as I like to call it. My history, well, I've been an interior designer for 14 years, and Jonathan, I kind of have this weird, funny history with medical care, with the dentists, doctors, dermatologists, plastic surgeons, and so on and so forth. And basically, I've just, I just had so many car accidents and so many accidents in, as a kid. I was one of those kids who just, you know, 
fell down a lot. For example, I fell down the stairs and chipped my, both of my front teeth right after my permanent teeth came in. I had a dog bite in Mexico that left me with one of many facial scars. Mm. And somehow I didn't get rabies. And at 17, I had a car wreck that had my head been in a different place, I'd be dead or so the doctors told me. And my, it was, it's kind of a funny story, but you know, my front tooth flew out of my mouth and a policewoman picked it up and gave it to the paramedics at the scene. Nice. So, well, that was very thoughtful of her. <laughs> that was very thoughtful of her, and I'm, I'm very grateful. So it, it's just a, a process of, that was kind of my biggie at 17 years old, and that was a, a process of, of healing over many years, getting my life back together. And I've, it, you know, kind of the list goes on and on, and we could be here for a really long time telling you all the different stories about my bike wrecks and how I fell down a flight of stairs, and <laughs> I'm still here today. And then in 2010, I was in a car accident. I was designing a dental office in Ilwaka, Washington, and on my way home, I got in a car accident, of course, and it wasn't my fault. So somebody hit me from behind, and... I landed in an ER and then I started to, I landed in a, in a, in a natural medicine practice and suddenly I was, you know, healing there and becoming friends with these private practice, you know, physicians and wellness practitioners and, um, I was designed, they hired me and I was designing their spaces and then I started noticing something really interesting. And that was that every time I would design a medical office or this particular facility, which there was lots of different uh, businesses within this one clinic, that business would increase. So what I mean by that is that patients were loving the space. They were, you know, coming back. They were, they were telling their friends and family about the services. So I kept hearing back from my clients suddenly over and over and over again how business was improving when I'd come and I'd redesign the space. So I'd choose new paint colors and new furniture and artwork and all these different things. And suddenly business was improving. And so I started to, over the years, I started to notice this and come up with my own case studies and do my own research. And what I found is that within the first six months or so after designing a lot of dentist offices, medical offices, and so forth, and other businesses, that referral business improved about 40% on average within six months. And sometimes it was 85%. And a lot of times it was like 300%. So I knew I was onto something and I started to specialize. And I, I just, I was so thrilled with the results so I decided to specialize, and that's that's here I am today with my business. So, so walk me through this because again, you know, this is this is this is like you're 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 basically it's almost like you're trying to explain um, the gr how gr grammatical syntax for Greek uh, language, <laughs> the Greek written language <laughs> is, is what it, is what it feels like we're about to get into. Okay. To me. So, uh, so but I'll, I'll break it down. Yeah, which is something I would be, I would find very interesting, but I, it's, okay. just, it's just okay. so foreign to me. So, sure. so talk to me about. So, so what, I'll give you, how, I'll give you some stories. Make a sure, I'll give you some stories. So, a young dentist hired me in McMinnville, Oregon, to redesign his dental practice. He had just inherit, not inherited. He purchased it from a man who had passed away. So he was a dentist, a well-established dentist who had been there for you know 30, 40 years, or even more. And he came into this practice and it was totally outdated. It was like it had wallpaper on the walls. And you guys, you guys, you, you dentists know what I'm talking about. And he and his wife called me in and said, please help us. You know, this is, this is a disaster. This is not, we need to build our business. We're, you know, I'm in a ton of debt um, coming out of dental school. I think he'd been out of dental school already for a while, but he still had a ton of debt. And I said, cool. And the thing that he was that was is was different is different than older or more conservative dentists out there is that he kind of had an open mind and he had an art background. I think he had a minor in college in art. So he was kind of open to doing some different things. So 
for example, I went in there and I asked him if he would be willing to paint the ceilings a dark color. The ceilings like yours, Jonathan, that have those white acoustic tiles mm -hmm. that are not very attractive. And when you're a dentist, you know, a lot of time is spent in the operatory room in the chair and looking up at a white tiled ceiling or bright glaring lights is actually increases anxiety and fear and it does nothing to reduce it. And so when you do something different, like paint your ceiling, which this dentist did, he had a really positive reaction. He had a, there was a really positive result. Uh, patients loved it. They loved getting hit with this cozy, warm, nice, dark ceiling, which we did throughout the entire space. And so that's an example of one of the things we did. And so is that, do you think that's almost like an association thing because of the fact that everyone's ceilings were white, that, that you equate white ceilings with the doctor's office? Absolutely. I mean, a absolutely. I mean, think about it. Think about all the doctors you've been to throughout your whole life, dentists and mm -hmm. doctors, and think about those buildings. And I know you're not into design, but I'm sure if somebody asked you, you'd be like, yeah, yeah, those industrial kind of sterile looking rooms with, you know, white acoustic tile ceiling and maybe white walls or beige walls or it, and it feels very clean. You know, it's clean and sterile, but it's nothing above and beyond clean and sterile. So it's... Um, so this this dentist uh, listened to me, and he uh, he did everything I said, and and the results he he onboarded like a hundred new patients, like right when he did, right when he kind of put everything together. People loved it so much. It was a small town. Word got around fast, and he said that people were asking him what the color palette was. Patients were asking him so they could replicate the feeling in their homes. Cool. That's crazy. Like for a dentist's office, for a dentist to hear <laughs> that, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, as, so as far as yeah, as as far as that happening and that that occurring, I mean, what what is it that whenever you are doing that? Because the example you're talking about, you're, you're saying someone acquired a practice and they went and they did they, they did the, they did the redesign. I hear a lot of people talk about how like if you take over a practice, don't change anything for six months. But I also hear a ton of people saying, I got in there and it looks like it was from the 1980s. Right. Uh, so, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, from your perspective, when, when's the right timing to, to go about you know, thinking about the redesign and, and the color scheme and everything sure. like that? Again, this is my perspective. So, and this is my opinion based on what I've seen. And I think it's really important to do it right away. Um, it's important to step in your own space and it's important that you reflect your personality, your hobbies, and you start to build relationships with the, with the patients that you've inherited. So they're used to this other person and you need to come in and build that trust and build those relationships, especially when you're just starting out so that they can get to know you and they can talk about you and you can be the guy that they're talking about, you know, to their friends or on social media, on Facebook and such. So Dr. Adam Deesberg in McMinnville, the same, the same dentist that I was just talking to you about, had a, 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 a hobby, a very lovely hobby of um, collecting uh, the Japanese bonsai, those little trees, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. And he put them in his waiting room. And he, it was, so plants, indoor, indoor plants are incredibly therapeutic. I think they're really, really overlooked. But this was a nice way to kind of blend his hobby with a therapeutic um, element of nature inside his space. That was a talking point. It was a conversation point. So he started, you know, patients started asking, oh, these are such beautiful bonsai plants. And staff started saying, yeah, you know, this is Dr. This is Dr. Deesberg's hobby. And they started asking more questions. And then when they were in the chair, it kind of created conversation. And then he used it as part of his marketing tools. So, you know, whenever he put out a newsletter, he'd talk about his new plants or he'd start revolving them in his, in his waiting room. And so what happened was people started to fall in love with him because he, he started to humanize himself away from, you know, I'm just this dentist, a scary dentist with the drill in my hand. And basically I'm behind you the whole time. You can't really see me, you know, except for the first few moments when you get into the operatory chair. So these relationships stick. And so I'm sure as you know, Jonathan, building relationships is key in building a profitable business.
Right. 100%. 100%. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, let me ask you this as far as the the practices that are doing this. And whenever I whenever I speak to to, to the experts that I speak to, uh, I like to try and take the perspective of someone that's a listener. So I'd like to start thinking through what the listeners might be thinking. And one of the questions I think might come up is this sounds like it would work. Like it, it makes complete sense that you would, you would do the exact things that you've talked about so far. However, in my situation, I'm going into a practice that, you know, is, is heavy PPO or heavy insurance. And we have a lot of patients and they're just coming in for this or for that or for this or for that. I mean, is this something that you would, you would recommend for every practice or is this something you'd only recommend for like really high level, like cosmetic dentistry, high fee for service type practices? No, I, I th thank you for asking that question. It's a really good question. I think it's important for everyone to do. I think there's a sort of thought or this, this sort of thinking that you can only do this if you charge, you know, a lot of money for high-end cosmetic dentistry, kind of like a spa-like atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And so what's happening in healthcare design and what we're seeing in hospitals and at higher levels of care are these really creating these patient-centered environments that are really nurturing and healing and profitable for hospitals, which are, you know, billion dollar industries. So even if you take, you know, 100 patients a day, <laughs> you're taking PPOs and HMOs and all, all that stuff, I don't know all the technicalities of who mm -hmm. takes dental insurance or who doesn't. Sure. It's still really important because you are creating a healing environment that's still going to bring your, your patients back. You still have a reputation in the community you know, you may you may eventually want to start start charging people. There maybe there are some people or some patients who you do who are cash based, and so you want to maybe build. Maybe there's going to be a point where you want to build more of that aspect. Maybe it's five percent right now. Maybe you want to build twenty percent of a cash based practice. Um, but overall, I mean, you will help reduce anxiety and fear and create a really comforting and nurturing environment in what in my opinion and a lot of people's is one of the most scariest medical environments that is out there it, you know there there's so much fear i think i read a statistic five to eight percent of people in the united states will just never go to the dentist and 20% will only go when they are suffering something so catastrophic that they they are forced to go. So mm -hmm. that's, you know, that's a lot of millions. That's several, several millions. Uh, and so I think it's really important for your reputation and, 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 you, and a heart, heart centered place. You know, if you're a mission driven dentist, if you got into dentistry because you want to serve and you want to help people and you love smiles and you want to prevent diseases, then you also want to make people, your staff and your patients feel as comfortable as possible. So then th there's this other piece too, Jonathan, about that there's been a lot of studies done that when you do create patient-centered designs in your waiting room and throughout your practice, you, you know, staff retention rates are higher. So we, you know, that's that a really important piece. You know, there's a higher job satisfaction. They've done studies with plants, for example, indoor plants in spaces that show that people get along better. Productivity is higher. Uh, staff and your team feel like they're, their sense of, of luxury, there's there's a therapeutic quality about being around plants that is overlooked and underutilized. And so I think my point in all this is that it doesn't have to be a spa-like atmosphere. It just needs to feel really nurturing and comforting. It doesn't have to look like it's jumping off the pages of Scandinavian design magazine, for example. <laughs> It just has to feel good. And I want to offer today some key elements and some things that you can start thinking about and get started with creating a patient-centered design that is therapeutic and that does affect the brain's, you know, dopamine qualities or calm the nervous, helps the nervous system relax, helps people, 
you know, as soon as they walk into your waiting room, you know, kind of relax their shoulders and feel safe, like they're not going to die. And, you know, they can actually get through this dentist appointment without holding their breath and, you know, squeezing on a ball so tight they might break it. Yeah. So, uh, I will, yeah, we'll absolutely get into those. Uh, what, what, I do have another question. The So for, you know, to me, whenever, uh, if I were to be buying a dental practice tomorrow, you know, I'm not, I'm not a dental practice owner. I, I, I likely never, likely never will be. Uh, but if I were to have one and I were going to go about doing a redesign, how do you go about, like, to me, like the, 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 the most basic question then becomes, you know, what color is everything? Um, because like right. you said, you, you know, everything you, you, if you do what everyone else is doing, you're just going to end up looking like another dental practice. Even if you just update it, it's still going to look like all the other dental practices because right. you know most of the designs are fairly similar. Whenever you go through like a you know a, a big supply company that does the design for you, right. and they're all they're all shades of the same thing. Maybe they'll use a different accent color or something like that to make it be mm -hmm. your design or whatever it is. Um, yeah. uh, most of them are, are, are pretty are pretty similar in that regard. So right. how do you go about helping someone figure out the right sure. color dental practice? Sure. Well, um, I wrote a book called A Color Cure, and that will help you uh, learn about which colors to use for your mm -hmm. for your dental practice for any medical facility. Because I break it I break it down a lot in that book. So that's I'm sure I'm sure, I'm sure it's all, it's mostly black and midnight black and. <laughs> Double dark black, right? right. <laughs> Those are the colors, right? Exactly. Oh, no. <laughs> so the first thing you want to do is you just want to sit down and think about who your patients are, you know, what their demographic is. So are 50% mm -hmm. are of your patients, you know, seniors? If they are, if 80% of your patients are seniors and you're going to treat the design of the facility differently than if you treat it, if you're, if you do, um, if you treat children, you know, mm -hmm. if you do, uh, if you treat children or if you treat women, predominantly women between the ages of, you know, maybe 30 and 55. And that's because, you know, in the senior population, there's, there's um, the vision aspects, you know, that you have to take into consideration, uh, the t deterioration of vision and eye diseases. So when uh, the older population, you know, I'm talking 70 plus, has degenerative eye disease, you know, they can see darker colors or certain colors as black holes. Or for example, if you if you decide on a carpet that has a million lines in it and feels like a rushing river or you're on a freeway during traffic, then that can be terrifying for your older adult uh, patient. So you need to kind of sit down and get, I, I tell people, get out a piece of paper and and it's funny because I'm, I'm in the process right now of writing my next book called The Waiting Room Cure. <laughs> and I go through this actual practice. So you get out a piece of paper and you just, a lot of, some people don't know, but you, you want to know. If you're buying a new practice, I'm sure that's, that's, you know, you'll have some idea of who your patients are. So, for example, if your patients generally, I find that patients are women between the age, you know, some of them are young mothers between the ages of like, you know, 30 and 45 or 33 and 50. And then you're going to want to note that, okay, these are, these are my patients. And, and so if anybody has any specific needs, like children will have specific needs and seniors might have specific needs, then you want to take that into consideration before you jump in and choose a color. So is we'll start with color. Um, so I typically see white on walls in dental offices or like beige, which is very uninspiring and lackluster. And I think it's, it's done that way because it feels quote air quotes around safe mm -hmm. and it actually is, is not, it doesn't feel safe. So some of the more nurturing colors for your waiting room are the, in the greens and the blue families. So, Green we know uh, from science, and now green is kind of a tricky color, because if you think about some hospitals in the 1970s, you think about this kind of a yellow green that it kind yeah. of is like a pukey green, and I call that vomit like green in my scrub, book. Like, the, like, the, like a scrub green, like, green like the green that scrubs scrub. from my surgeons and things like that. 
Exactly. It's like the mixture of, it's kind of like that. Some of them are, some of them weren't, depending. It's a mixture of black and yellow. And that gets kind of like a bile looking green. That, it, that, mm -hmm. that makes the nervous system feel uneasy, kind of uh, promotes some um, nausea and some, some um, very talented set designers like in the movie Carol have, have you know, carefully selected this quote vomit green to create feelings of uneasiness. So stay away from that and stay away from red and stay away from yellow. Now, reds and yellows are really stimulating. Reds and yellows make you hungry. They make you move quickly. They speed up the nervous system. For anybody that has any kind of mental um, stress or illness, it can create, it can stimulate anger, you know. So think of McDonald's and fast food restaurants. They use a red and a yellow combination very strategically. <laughs> it makes you hungry and it makes yeah. you move quickly. That's a good. That's a really good point. I mean, I, I don't think I can't think of any really um, any restaurants that have a blue and green uh, logo. Maybe Long John Silver's, but I think that they're yellow and blue. Right. <laughs> well, the opposite oh, is. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm digging. <laughs> we're, we're getting back into territory that I'm. I, I know of restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> so Starbucks. Okay, you guys have a Starbucks over there in Arkansas, right? Oh yeah, we 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 have Starbucks. Okay. Okay, so Starbucks uses like more earth tones, like earthy greens and mm -hmm. earthy browns and earthy yellows. So it's more earthy and grounded and sometimes they use blues and that's for a reason because they want you to hang out and relax and drink more tea, drink more coffee, spend more money, which is a very different feeling than McDonald's. They, yeah, they let the tea and coffee do the adrenaline boost rather than the, uh, the colors palette, right? Exactly. Exactly. So now you know, now you dentists out there know what not to use. So let's get back into what, what to think about to use. So green is, is, you know, if you're going to choose green, I'd love for you to, you know, do some research first on greens and, or, you know, you can buy my book. I'm not like asking you to buy it, but you can if you want specific colors. So you want like a really nurturing kind of a green, a really soothing green. And green lowers blood pressure. It It is, it like is the, I think it's the only color where the retina can focus on it directly and there's no strain on the eye muscle. And it's just a beautiful color. Now the other color I recommend are in the blue families. Blue is a color of trust. So a lot of people will wear blue shirts when they are spe have speaking engagements or when they're trying to close a sale. So because it's the color of trust, it's, it's used on the internet that way in sales and in different ways. Well, there's a reason for that. So for example, if somebody walks into your practice and they see blue right away, that's going to have a calming therapeutic effect on their nervous system. And if that blue is near your reception desk and your signage and a really smiling, happy face behind the desk of your staff saying welcome, it creates a really positive experience versus, you know, walking into another dentist's office where it's just white walls and hard surfaces. So that's the first thing is to create, is to paint a color that is soothing and calming to the nervous system. It's really interesting when you say that because like I automatically thought about uh, other times I've seen that and I was like, I know I saw something literally today that did exactly that. Like, Tell uh, me. Association. Uh, uh, there's a very famous web application called uh, ClickFunnels, which is for you know, online marketing that uh, is ran by a brilliant marketer named Russell Brunson. And I mean, like I, I saw, I saw, I literally saw we were, I was watching an episode of the, of the profit last night, which was on CNBC, a TV show about mm -hmm. um, you know, business. And uh, he was on there and it made me think about his, his, his click funnel site. And for some reason this morning, I just checked it and I'll, and uh, as I checked it, our, and I just, I was like, I'm pretty sure I, I noticed that today. And I just literally just typed it in and checked it. And literally you type in click funnels and you don't get their web page at first. The first thing you see is a page of blue. That's all you see at the beginning. It's really? all blue is all you see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um and then the home page comes up. I don't know if that's on purpose or if that's just like a loading thing, but it you know, it 
it, it ties in exactly with what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So how did it make you feel? Oh, I, I felt like I could take a nap on my computer. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, no, you know, and you know, and I, I completely understand. You know, I said that just jokingly, but I, I'm I'm saying that you know, um, there's a hundred percent. You know, I hundred percent agree with what you're saying as far as you know the um, what our minds connect with different uh, you know stimuli effectively. Right. Um, right. You know. For, for example, you know, this is one of the things, like, this is a, this is a weird, you know, uh, example of that. But, you know, in my CPA firm, we don't charge for phone calls. And the reason we don't charge for phone calls is because whenever we charge for phone calls, if people call us and then we send them a bill, we're sending them a negative reaction to contacting us. Right. And so we don't want to do that. Um, and when you're saying that, you know, reds and yellows, you know, show, you know, give people the, the, you know, thinking of speeding up and getting it done and, and, you know, having it be a fast moving thing. You know, again, it makes me think about like casinos. A lot of the time the casinos floors are red and yellow. Sure. I don't like hand casinos all the time. I just know because I was in Vegas like a month ago. Um, and I, you know, it made me think about that. Whereas all the tables are green. Um, and, you know, so it just makes me think through those types of things. And, you know, we, yeah we have all of these uh you know natural connections to things and environments that are set up in certain ways that we you know may not realize that we're actually programmed to take care of and i'm sure that the reason these are this way is based off of you know evidence effectively uh, and i know that's something you've talked yeah. about is like evidence-based design well yeah i mean what you said is so great jonathan i mean why i mean you know, merchandisers and, and marketing, you know, retailers have, have known this for years and years. And so you were just talking about the casino. It's no accident that those colors were chosen. You know, there was a conversation that was had with the designers and the architects about what can we use in color psychology to create a feeling in the casino that makes people spend more money. Mm -hmm. So why not create, why not help people feel more relaxed and tap into some of the evidence, which will get, you know, evidence-based design to make people feel more relaxed and, and calm. And at the same time, build your business to be uh, extremely profitable. Why not? I mean, it's just a win-win for everybody. So, yeah. So, I mean, it's beautiful. It's just, so it, I think it's an under underutilized resource and, and it's it's clearly my purpose as you can, if you haven't already guessed that. Yeah. So you mentioned evidence-based design, which is um, comes out of the Center for Health Design, which is a very large organization, a wonderful organization that is dedicated to this, pro to implementing evidence-based design principles in hospitals and acute, you know, medical settings in ambul ambul ambulatory, excuse me, settings across, you know, the country and the world. And they're in here in the Bay Area. And evidence-based design is simply what it sounds like it is. It's, ba it's using the evidence that science is now saying is for real <laughs> um, to inform, you know, design decisions about the built environment. I mean, it's, it's, it's as simple as that. So for some examples of evidence-based design are nature, you know, nature versus not nature. So there was um, a study that was done in, I think, 81, and it was published. Roger uh, Ulrich, I believe his name is, he's an environmental psychologist. I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing your name right, Roger. Hey, um, he, that's a big demo for this, uh, this podcast, <laughs> is a, a design psychologist. <laughs> They're pretty big. I'm going to get so many angry emails. It, it, it was Ulrich. <laughs> Ulrich. Ulrich, Ulrich. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, he, he did a famous study where he had, uh, he followed gallbladder patients, uh, gall, people who were getting gallbladder surgery in the same hospital, and half of them had views of uh, a, a brick wall or, you know, something very similar to that. And the other half had had a view of a tree or a view of some type of a natural setting. And everything else was the same. The same nurses, same doctors, same, 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 the way the rooms were set up. I mean, everything was identical except for these things. So what was discovered is that the, the patients who 
who had a view of a tree or some type of a nature view got out of the hospital a day or two early, needed less, less reliance on pain medications, you know, all kinds of things. And so this is one example of ev an evidence-based design case study that's, that's, you know, there's so many more that have been done over the years. So this is also translated to artwork. So Jonathan, you have a beautiful piece of nature art behind you on the wall behind you. And this kind of artwork, which shows, you know, a certain kind of lighting come through, like sunrise coming through like a forest. And it is, it is, it is, is quite impactful on the nervous system and on the brain. And it really helps to reduce stress. So there's a story of a woman who was getting chemotherapy and she went into a, you know, kind of a, a regular doctor's office to do that. And there was a beautiful, very large print of an oak tree with a bench under the oak tree and some beautiful light coming through it. And, you know, she was going for some several months to get chemotherapy. And when she was finished, she wrote a really nice letter to the nurse. And she said, thank you so much for that print that you had in the waiting room. It was my connection to God. It was my meditation. I, it was my connection to feeling hopeful and knowing that I can get through this. That oak tree was, you know, so important to me. So the nurse was shocked. She was like, what? So that's what evidence-based design is. There's, it doesn't, it, you know, it's, it, it's, it's a lot of different ways to use design and use evidence to create a really positive outcome for patients and, and their families. So Very that's... Cool. So you mentioned uh, before that you had some 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 tips uh, effectively yeah. for people, some kind of quick I tips do. about different I things do. that are just big mistakes that people make in dental practices. Okay. Um, do you mind? There's yeah. five or six of them. Do you mind yeah. going over those? Can I start with the most radical one that sure. I want to see changed? Sure. And I'm going to talk to Howard Foran about this uh, next month when I'm <laughs> on his show, Dentistry Uncensor Uncensored. I'm so excited about that. I can hardly stand it. Um, I'm also really excited to be here. So one of the biggest problems that I see with uh, dentist offices is the, is the position of the operatory chair. So the way that it's been traditionally placed is that uh, people who are in the chair, the patients have their back to the door. And this is because there's easy, I know, I know it has to be because, and I've spoken to f some dentists about this, including my brother. Mm -hmm. There needs to be like space behind to be able to go inside and outside of the rooms quickly to be able to have access to different things. What happens from the patient perspective is that they are totally and completely out of control. So they are laying back in a chair. There is discussion about what's going on in their mouth, a very sensitive area, especially if you're in a lot of pain behind them. They, because they can't see, you know how it is when you can't see something, mm -hmm. it's more of like you have to rely on your other senses. So you hear feet behind you, you hear them talking, you hear the sounds of the drill. And it, it's so much bigger in your mind than it actually is in reality. It's, it's, it's ginormous. And it's so easy for the patient to catastrophize, for them to start shaking, for them to, for their anxiety to just fly off the handle. If now, on the other hand, if the chair is turned around in such a way, and I know it's not always possible because the operatory is so small, you know, that you can, the chair can only go one way. If the chair is turned around so that there's a wall behind the chair, there's the cabinets and stuff behind the chair, and there's still room for, you know, the assistants and the hygienist and the dentist to work behind there, and the person can see what's in front of them. Maybe they're at catty corner to the door, the entrance. I know a lot of dentists don't have doors on their operatories. And they can kind of have a view if there's a window. So maybe on the, if, if I was laying in the chair, I might have a view to the right, outside of the window and to the left. I can see who's coming in and coming out. This is a very, it's kind of a revolutionary idea. And I like to talk about it first because I, I want to, um, ask the dentists who are listening out there who mm. have an opportunity to decide or move or maybe they haven't moved into a new dentist's office yet and there's 
a moment where they can decide where that chair goes. I dare you <laughs> to place the chair in such a way that it empowers your patient and helps them feel more in control. This will be so helpful to not only your patients, but to your business. Um, I mean, to be honest, when, well, I mean, to be honest, when I go to a restaurant, I don't like sitting with my back to the door. Um, right. I, mm -hmm. I, I prefer to be sitting with looking see the right. exit or the entrance. Um, so I can, I can, I can, I can see that. Um, yeah. I mean, I think the, the, the objections to that I hear out there, dentists going, well, they're laying down anyway. It doesn't really matter. It really does matter. Um, it matters to keeping our stress levels down. So mm -hmm. there's been some studies that have shown that people who sit with their back to their doors have an increase in cortisol, which is the stress hormone, and those who face the door or somehow not directly in line with the door, but somehow can see the door from where they sit or, or are lying down in bed in their rooms are, you know, have more of the oxytocin, the feel-good hormone. So hmm. Interesting. So what, what other points are there? Wow, there are so many. So let's talk about let's talk about familiarity. So we science knows science tells us that when people see something familiar, the stress response is is relaxed. So when thinking about your artwork in your in your dental office in your waiting room, think about nature photography that's local to you so i don't know jonathan what are some like national landmarks or what are some famous parks that are in your city let's try that well um uh, back where i grew up there was a a, a a fairly infamous corner store at goober town arkansas but <laughs> um but no there's a there's okay. a really great um um river close by um okay the, uh, What's it called? Uh, there's the Arkansas River, which has okay. you know, some, some pretty cool bridges. Would there's you say the, that everybody knows, everybody in Arkansas kind of knows about that river, has, has been there, maybe there, loves it, loves the outdoors, like some kind of outdoors area that's, you know, kind of well-loved by the, by the people who live there? I don't know if they if, if um if they they have, you know, everyone has, has been down to like Two Rivers Park at, you know, off down by the Arkansas River, but I think that everyone uh, would probably recognize the bridge that goes over it, or if you're, okay. you know, to be taking a picture going outward from the bridge, that right. you would recognize the view when you're driving over the bridge to get from, you know, Little Rock to North Little Rock, or you know, however it may be. Exactly. So here's a really great design tip for you dentists out there. When thinking about the artwork in your waiting room either go out and make photographs of yourself, buy photographs from a local artist or photographer of some of these bridges, or like if you live in Manhattan, it would be Central Park. It would be all these very large, and go large. Don't go small, because the larger, the more impact. Mm -hmm. And it's such a great investment. You might say, well, artwork, is, you know, photography is expensive, but it's actually a great investment. I know there's so many amateur photographers out there that you can tap into, you know, maybe a cousin or a friend, or maybe you have the funds and you want to invest them into that. Place those images on the walls of your waiting room. And what happens is so a first time patient comes in and is really frightened and suddenly they see something familiar and it instantly relaxes them. They go, oh, I'm in the right place. And it creates kind of a community feeling like, oh yeah, these are my people. Like, yeah, Central Park, we all love that. Now I, I live near San Francisco. So if I was a dentist, I would place images of the Golden Gate Bridge and all the different parks. And there's so many areas in nature that I would place. So nature, again, is known to calm the nervous system and uh, increase feelings of well-being and it taps into certain images tap into you know the dopamine effect of that the brain has it reduces it helps the immune system so you know that's that's so my first tip is to choose a soothing color my second tip is to you know do something radical with your operatory chair and 
I, you know, reach out to me anytime because I would love to talk to you about that because that's kind of like a pet project of mine and I would love mm -hmm. to see more dentists do that and to really take a risk and do that because I, I know it'll be so successful. Um, and then three, to place artwork that is, has a nature element in it and has some local landmarks that are familiar to people that are familiar to everybody, familiar to the community. That's one thing you can do. So that's that's the third thing. Um, should I keep going on? I don't want to overwhelm you. No, that, that, those are those are really good ones. Uh, and we're, we're running up on the end of the hour. So, okay. uh, you know, really great discussion, really interesting uh, perspective on uh, how the, you know, how these different elements that, to be quite honest, like whenever I, I've, I've talk, spoke with, dentists that are doing startups or doing acquisitions and they talk about, you know, redesigning, I just say that you aren't leaning on me to make these decisions <laughs> because I would not know where to go with it. Right. Uh, I, I know, I know there's a thing called Pinterest and you can probably type in paint colors on there and it probably gives those to you. That's all I know. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> so uh, thanks so much for coming on. You've been really, thanks for having me. If anyone wants to reach out and learn more, what's a good way for them to be able to get in contact with you? So I offer a few things. So the first thing I offer is a free color email course. It's a five day email course. And I really recommend that you sign up to it. It's free and you can kind of dip your toe in the water of learning about what, why and what and how to go about, you know, transforming your, you know, dentist practice into an oasis by choosing the perfect paint. And you can simply sign up by going to my website, CherylJaniceDesigns.com. CherylJaniceDesigns.com and you can sign up there. I do offer I do offer design services to, you know, virtually through video and I do have a single um, service that I offer. So you can go on my website and learn more about that. It's called the Design Space Lift. And it's a process where I take you through kind of uncovering your genius a little bit, a little bit what I did today with Jonathan. And, you know, figuring out what that genius is and um, creating an environment that reflects your genius and reflects your brand and helps you create that profitable you know, viable business that you want to create while, you know, really helping your patients to heal and, and feel great while they're in your space. So it's just go to my website and that's it. And very thank cool. you, Jonathan. It's been so great being on the show. I, I am very grateful to have been here. Yeah. Well, it's been, it's been, it's been a great, great discussion. Uh, very interesting stuff. Uh, I look forward to hearing from you in the future. So thanks again for coming on and giving your time. And Thank uh, you. have a great day. You too. Bye. Hey, a special thanks to Cheryl for coming on the show today. Office design is something that isn't really talked a whole lot about in dentistry. But as Cheryl shares, it can really make a huge difference. Now, not knowing much about office design myself, I really enjoyed Cheryl's perspective. And I hope that you came away with a few takeaways today as well. So as a bonus for today, Cheryl has generously offered her free report on how to choose the right paint colors for your office. If you've been meaning to make some office modifications, I highly recommend you give it a look. To get that bonus, simply text PRACTICE to 33444. Again, that's PRACTICE to 33444. Or visit StartYourDentalPractice.com slash bonus if you're outside of the U.S. You'll also receive updates on the latest episodes of Start Your Dental Practice helpful tips for owning and running a practice, and promotional opportunities direct to your inbox. So that's it for today's episode, but that doesn't mean that the learning and implementation have to stop there. I've created a free report called the 15 numbers that will make or break your dental practice. This report has been downloaded over a thousand times by dental professionals. So if you want your free copy of this report that's going to outline what the most important numbers are in any dental practice, 
and it also includes how to look at your numbers, how to set goals, it has a whole slew of really important information that is the culmination of all of my experience as a dental, dental CPA, then just go to startyourdentalpractice.com slash free gift. That is startyourdentalpractice.com slash free gift. And so that's it for today, Ambitious Dentist. Again, I'm Jonathan Van Horn, CPA and ABV. I'll see you next week with another world-class practice owner or consultant that will help you start your very own dental practice. Thank you guys so much for being a part of the Start Your Dental Practice community. If you enjoyed today's episode, please do me a favor and go to startyourdentalpractice.com slash iTunes to leave your honest feedback and review on iTunes. It's going to help me create a better experience, a better show, a better podcast for you, the ambitious dentist. Your feedback really does help. Regardless if you liked the show today or not, if you didn't like the show, let me know because it's going to help me create a better show and podcast for you. Lastly, if you know of anybody that would benefit from today's episode and today's content, today's guest, please feel free to share with them on social media or through email.